Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5, where for the newest update, we get the Drift Club Mexico. Now, I've three-starred all the easy stuff, and we're starting to come up to what I would think would be some more challenging type events. But so far, for someone who has very That's little skill, this isn't Mustang. too bad. Very nice. It is. I told you this was a muscle drift, and we've got 6.9 miles of the nicest drift road I think I've ever seen to try it out on. Let's get cracking. So anyway, the thing is, with this uh, event, uh, you have a time clock on the upper left corner there when you start. So, generally speaking, making the points isn't the hard part. Okay. Yeah, this Mustang is uh, not too bad. All these Formula Drift cars they've been giving you, I'll be honest, um, even if you're somewhat unskilled like I am at drifting, it's not as hard as it may seem to make the points with because they're good cars. Uh, they're set up for drifting. You can get some pretty crazy angles without spinning out. And as long as you kind of use manual transmission, I found it's actually very easy to get drifts going and kind of maintain them. Um, I'm not skilled enough to really take turns that well, so what I do is I tend to use what they call power over drifts. Uh, once I'm part of the way into the turn, I hit the gas and uh, kick it over that way. I'm not using handbrake, I'm not using weight shifting properly, nor am I really following any lines, other than I'm trying my best not to freaking drive off the road. Um, as you can see, even as bad as that is, as long as you get some drifts going, uh, the points on the bottom still racking up okay. Um, people that are really good at drifting, generally, the key is they can keep it uh, flowing. They just go from one move to the other. They kind of pre-plan when they're going to start the turns, when to slow down, uh, you know, when to let go of the gas to kick the car the other direction, all that stuff. So I I'm not there yet. I'm just my my main priority here is not to crash. Try not to spin out and basically rack points where I can safely do so. So, um, <coughs> all the, from the beginning of this uh, Horizon event, this is a solo event, obviously. So you're not, you don't have to wait. You can just do this whenever you have time. But from the beginning of this event, the issue is that you needed to kind of figure out what drifting is and how to do it, uh, whether you like it or not. Fortunately. All of us probably have done some drifting uh, in the drift zones, whether we care to or not. The only thing I would say is uh, I'm using a keyboard to drive and, you know, uh, finger managing all these keys to maintain drifts can be a little tricky. Uh, people who use steering wheels or controllers may or may not have an easier time. Uh, but so far, I'm hanging in there. This car, again, is really good. Look, look at it. I'm, I'm uh, able to get some way drifts I'm able to get some of the, these corners half decent uh, not great I'm missing out on a lot of these uh, straightaways where if I had maintained some angle at speed that would have racked up extra hundred thousand two hundred thousand points by now but who cares six miles of road a lot you will get a million points I mean I, I just can't see not getting a million points uh, with this amount of road to drift to Although, if you keep running off the road like I am just doing there, eh, that might be tricky. But I'm still watching the clock on the upper left as well. I still have six minutes, plenty of time. Uh, six miles of road, a long, long distance to drift. So, really, I don't think the goal of this uh, particular challenge is to deny you the ability to get through with three stars. It's more just... You know, uh, I, I don't even consider it challenging, and I'm not even skilled at drifting. So, I think for anybody who's even half decent at drifting, this is going to be a breeze. They're going to blow right through this, get the uh, Mustang Maki, and they'll be like, "Oh well, all right, on to the next great thing." But I am glad they did. They added this uh, event. Uh, it is fun, and again, this is day one, and I'm almost done with it. So, if that tells you anything, um, <coughs> I think some people are going to feel. That it's, again, too short, too quick. You get it done right away, and that's that. But, uh, hey, 
what, what can you do, right? You gotta figure out what you like and kind of roll with it. But it is nice that they added this. I, I think giving you a chance to test drive the Formula Drift cars, uh, giving you long track with a little bit of a time limit to work through, uh, all this stuff does help enhance uh, your understanding, a little bit of understanding, hopefully, of drifting and obviously uh, also uh, improving your drifting skills if possible. But I suspect guys that are really good at drifting will be coming down this mountain at close to 2 million points, not just 1 million points. Uh, my goal, of course, is just hitting 3 stars. I don't care if I'm 1 million and 1 point. As long as I get that, I can move on to the next chapter and go ahead and get uh, through and get the car. This one uh, I thought would be the m one of the more challenging because it's near the end of the series of challenges and the ones before this were all much easier and shorter in some cases but overall I think none of this is really challenging. I, I, if I were to put a challenge level on it I would say this is basically beginner level easy challenges. Um, they really really give you a lot of chance to get uh, tons of points and make sure you can three star this. Okay. Um, if anybody has any good critique about what I'm doing wrong, okay. please let me know. I'm, I am to trying complete. to learn how to drift still. Uh, and, Just you know, would love to learn some it. more uh, well, from people who are pro at long. this. You're no good at keeping secrets, Rob. You know that. All right, so three star that. Let's uh, wait and jump to the next chapter. Okay. All right, let's fast travel. Do you think you could just pop over to Guanajuato? Be quiet, he'll hear you. <laughs> sure, Rob. Mum's the word. All right, so new. This is in the city now. This is the final chapter of the Drift Club. Uh, and this one only requires 100,000 points, but it's in the city. Having done a few Horizon Open drifts, I can tell you I absolutely hate drifting in the city. Uh, I can never seem to get a flow going and smooth transitions, whatever. Okay. Uh, well, just the local chapter of Drift Club Mexico. We thought we'd surprise you. Well, there's more spectators than I expected for a secret club. Right. Let's put on a bit of a show then. I always found it interesting that I have a British accent, but hey, you know, you got to suspend this belief. All right, here we go. Oh, just go straight down the stairs. Okay, so this is a short wheelbase, all-wheel drive, um, hooligan car, and I know these things can be a handful, but all-wheel drive also can save your butt uh, sometimes with these drifts because. You can go almost 90 degrees and still save it, unlike a rear-wheel drive car. So, let me see how well I can do here. I'm just watching the points on the bottom. I want to make sure I hit 100,000 points. After that, it's all gravy. So, oh, 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 tight turn. Yeah, so throttle control is really important with the narrower city streets and... They're all kinds of stuff you can catch on to, so you got to be careful. This is the part I hate. So in this tunnel, um, all those little ridges sticking out, they can catch your car. And if you run straight into it, you'll stop dead. Like that. Oh. Yeah, that wasn't good. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I, anyway, I hate this part. Uh, whether it's racing or drifting, whatever it is, these tunnels have been kind of a major problem for me to make good times with so anyway I'm just gonna oh I'm over I'm well over a hundred thousand points so I'm safe again it, you know this is beginner level stuff if you can make two hundred thousand points before the end then it's really really not hard uh, all right are we almost there yet yeah so these little hoonigan cars actually because um, they drift easy and you can recover pretty easily and they have a nice multiplication. They actually make good uh, skill point cars, but nowadays skill points are not that useful. So I've got a bit yeah. of a confession. You see, we've got another car for you to have a look at. Is that what I think it is? 
The RTR Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400, the first fully electric drift and Gymkhana platform. Should we take it out for a bit of a spin? Why, yes, yes, we will. We will take it out for a spin. Okay, here we go. This car was customized by drift legend and engineering wizard Mr. Vaughn Gitton Jr. and the fine people at RTR. Why? To answer that age-old question, what is the future of controlled oversteer? What's up, Rob? Looks like you two are having a lot of fun with that car. Oh, yes. Vaughn, it's quite a piece of work. Could I perhaps press you for your impressions working on it? Uh, well, it, it, it's a piece of work and it's hard to handle. The Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400 completely changed my perspective on what power and torque can be. Together, my team at RTR Vehicles and Ford Performance spent over 10,000 hours working collaboratively on this to bridge the gap between what people believe an electric car can do and what it can actually do. Turns out, it is well beyond my wildest expectations. The Mustang Mach-E 1400 uses seven motors, three on the front differential and four on the rear, giving us 1,400 horsepower so we can do anything from drifting to high-speed track racing. Every piece of aero and every duct you see is functional for aerodynamics and cooling. This car makes 2,300 pounds of downforce at 160 miles per hour. Ford has made it clear that they are bringing fun and function to the battery electric vehicle space, and this is just the start. I've watched even the most seasoned vets turn into giggly little kids behind the wheel and in the passenger seat of this wild machine. So, mission accomplished. We're almost at the end, but as you've noticed, we've been running in all-wheel drive mode with all seven motors. So, for the next bit, let's try something different. Something different. Okay, rear wheel drive mode. So that's and what's cool about this car. Wheel drive. The motor layout allows you to change drivetrain essentially at the push of a button. And it's incorporated in the game via the uh, so G button. There we go. From all wheel drive into rear wheel drive, shutting down the front motors, and then off we go. The fastest drivetrain swap you will ever do. And it's probably going to be a handful. Yeah, yeah, it's a handful. Yeah, so with 1,400 horsepower, I mean, one... Remember, you only have one gear in this thing. So it's like driving this car in first gear with 1,400 horsepower, rear wheel drive. It just, I mean, you know, I guess a pro drifter loves it, but for somebody like me, this thing is just... It's a handling nightmare. Jesus. Right. It just wants to go ahead and throw the tail around and plow you head first into a wall. Nice right left opportunity ahead. Right. Careful as you manage the inertia transfer. Yeah, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. The inertia transfer, I'm just trying not to crash badly each time. Um, see, as soon as I step on it, the car almost wants to just fling itself in a 180. It's really kind of tricky, actually. With the, I mean, maybe it, with some practice I will get better hang of this this is where i think a controller with um, more uh fine throttle control would really come in handy i mean the keyboard is an on and off button if i hit w it basically is 100 percent throttle if i don't hit w it's zero and make things a little tricky especially with a car like this as you can see i'm i'm really struggling oh no oh no high centered it uh-oh uh-oh the clock is still running. I need to get out of this. If I can't wiggle my way out, then I'm going to have to uh, reset the car. Here we go. Let's just reset position. Okay. All right. Let's not high center it again. All right. So I have 1 minute 25 seconds to get to the end of this thing. Let's not try drifting too hard. Let's just see if we can drive this without crashing. Ooh. Oh, man. This thing is... Ah, ah, handful, absolute handful. I really expected it to be better. I, I'm not, you know, I mean, I, I guess lack of skill is to blame here, but come on, this is, this thing is like impossible to drive on the keyboard. Ahead, you. 
Because you don't want 100% throttle most of the time. You don't need it. Ah! Crash, crash! Crash, crash! Oh. On behalf of Drift Club Mexico, as well as RTR and Ford Performance, let me thank you for this show of the noble art of intentional oversteer. So, we thought you might like to keep the Mach-E. That's amazing! But wait, won't Vaughn want it back, though? Oh, this is an exact duplicate of his. Let's just say I'm a bit excitable, too. And with that, we are now the proud owner of the Ford Mach-E drift car. Uh, not that I think I'll be using it much. Uh, but that basically brings us to the end of this chapter, which is the newest uh, storyline mode. Uh, again, it was very easy, and I enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you're a pro drifter in this game, feel free to share advice or um, any critique. If you like the video, leave a like. If you like my channel or like to get notifications when I put up new videos, hit the bell. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell, you get notifications. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.